Hello, and welcome to the 10th video in the Getting Started with the STA UHD Producer Plugin video tutorial series. The UHD Producer Plugin, made by Sonic Tier Audio, is a new panning plugin that allows for flexible panning and monitoring of immersive formats that Pro Tools doesn't directly support. As we discussed in the fourth tutorial in this series, positioning a signal in multiple dimensions, including the advanced surround format supported by the STA UHD Producer plugin, involves multiple axes and multiple panning parameters. Drawing pan position with the pencil tool, while easy to do with stereo, becomes much more complex when dealing with any surround format, which is why joystick or mouse panning is a more common way to go. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how you can add Pro Tools snapshot automation features to your workflow toolbox to make panning quick and easy. As you learned in the fourth tutorial in this series, stereo panning is fairly straightforward. Simple left-right panning using one automation line as you see here. When it comes to surround panning in any form, we're dealing with positioning in multiple dimensions and that means that any single position will involve multiple automation lanes. When we're talking about basic 5.1 or 7.1 panning in Pro Tools, it's done with three automation lanes, front lateral position, rear lateral position, and front to rear position. The STA UHD producer plugin, though it introduces height into the equation, still needs only three automation lanes. These are broken down into channel X for left to right positioning, channel Y for depth positioning, and channel Z for height positioning. That means that positioning in any surround format, since it requires coordinating multiple automation lines simultaneously, is fairly difficult to accomplish using the pencil tool alone. That's why mouse or joystick-based panning is more commonly seen when mixing in surround. But even joystick or mouse-based panning has its limits. When panning with the joystick or mouse, it's sometimes tricky to get smooth movement to specific locations at exact times. That's where different kinds of snapshot automation can help. Most experienced Pro Tools users will know this next bit already, so we'll go through it quickly. Before you can automate a parameter for automation, you need to enable it for automation. There are a number of ways you can do this. The most basic way is to go to a plugin and click the Automation button. You'll see a list of all the parameters that can be automated in the list on the left, and all the ones that are already enabled on the list to the right. Just click the parameter or parameters that you want to automate and click the Add button. Here's another way to do it. Holding the Control, Option, and Command keys, or Start, Alt, and Control for my Windows friends, click on the parameter that you want to automate. You'll see a small drop-down menu appear. Choose Enable Automation for and whatever the parameter name is. If you're like me, you want to make sure that all parameters are waiting to be automated, and there are two ways that you can do it. You can either hold down Control, Option, and Command, or again, Start, Alt, and Control for a Windows machine, and click the Automation button or go to the Preferences window, navigate to the Mixing tab, and check the Plugin Controls Default to Auto Enabled box. Enabling all parameters results in a long list of track views, but it works well for me. The only thing left to do is to open the Automation window from the Windows menu and make sure that Plugin Automation is enabled. You'll see different automation writing options below. These are great tools, but we'll be looking at a different workflow. Let's get into it. Here's a workflow that I use from time to time, and one that works especially well for surround production. In this scenario, I want to write static automation to a selection that I will play in loop playback, allowing me all the time that I need to get things right before I punch things in. The first thing that I'll do is to select the area that I want to write to, for example, a scene or effect. The next thing that I'll do is set the track's automation mode to off, which might sound like an odd thing to do, but it'll keep parameters from jumping around every time the selection restarts its loop. Once that's done, I'll start loop playback and take all the time that I want to get my plugin settings just the way that I want them. Next, we'll write these settings, and you've got two ways that you can go. If you only want to write a single parameter, go to the Edit drop-down menu, then to Automation, and finally to Write to Current. This will write your values for all automation lanes that are visible in the selection. If you want to write multiple parameters, such as the X, Y, and Z axis pan values, you'd need to display all of those automation lanes. If you adopt this workflow, you'll want to memorize the shortcut. It's Command and the forward slash on a Mac, and Control and the forward slash on a Windows system. If you want to write all enabled parameters, regardless of whether you can see them or not, you can instead choose Write to All Enabled. The shortcut is almost the same. Just add Option for Mac and Alt for Windows. This process will write to all the enabled parameters as determined in the automation window. 
If you only want to write to all plugin settings, then just deselect everything else in the automation window. This workflow takes a little bit of time to set up, but especially considering that you can do this on multiple tracks, with a little practice, this can become a real time saver. Let's take a look at a variation of this called Glide. Let's say that you have a sound that you need to move smoothly over a specified time. Of course, you can use your mouse, but let's also say that at the same time, you want volume changes inside the STA plugin and maybe even some automation on an EQ plugin to support the motion. That's where the Glide variation comes in very handy. The only tricky part of this workflow is that it requires for some automation to glide from. So if your track doesn't have the starting position automation where you want it already, you'll need to create it. The previous workflow can get that done easily. Next, select the area that represents the time in which you want the change to take place. Move your parameters to the settings that you want them to end on. Here again, you could turn automation off and loop your selected area to get the settings just right. Now that you're ready to write your automation, you have three choices from the automation menu. You can either glide to current, meaning currently visible automation. You can also glide to all enabled. This is similar to what we did when creating a static snapshot. We do have one more option, which is glide pan only. You'll see here that there are also shortcuts for each of these choices. In this case, I'll choose to glide to all enabled, and you'll see that my position, STA levels, and EQ all change smoothly from the starting settings to my ending settings. And that takes us to the end of our discussion on Snapshot Automation and the STA UHD Producer plugin. Other videos in this series will look more in depth at how to set up your Pro Tools session, different features, and even some tips and tricks. To learn more, visit sonictieredu.com learning.